Welcome to the August edition of Free PC VR Games. We're covering 14 new free games this month. Here we go. In Air Car, you get to pilot a flying car through a futuristic cityscape. And honestly, that's all the game allows you to do. There aren't any tasks or goals to achieve. However, the visuals are so good looking and the audio ambience so beautiful that I still recommend you try this. Even though you'll wish there was more to do, it's still a mesmerizing experience. Jackout is an exploration puzzle game that's obviously heavily inspired by The Matrix. This line is tapped, so I must be brief. I'm here to tell you that what you see isn't real. The goal is to enter a specific building and put on a special VR headset. To do that, you'll need to teleport around to solve a series of puzzles and gain access to the headset. If you enjoy very difficult puzzles, then this is definitely for you. Thankfully, there is a walkthrough available on the itch.io page, and I really needed that because some of the puzzles require solutions that I would have never thought of. The estimated playtime is one hour. Also, be warned that the ending of the game involves lots of flashing lights and colors, so this game should come with an epilepsy warning. Radiant Ascent is a trippy and customizable experience that does a lot. You can read all the details on the Steam page, but basically think of it like an interactive music video, as long as you provide the music, with tons of controls available to you. Like an overwhelming amount of controls available. Here's the page that shows you everything you can do. And the whole thing responds to any music you have playing on your PC. Usually, trippy audio experiences are non-interactive in nature, so this one is unique for providing so many different controls to the user. If you enjoy abstract art, then check it out. And speaking of music experiences, Sheaf Together EP is a series of gorgeous car rides driven by a musical backdrop of synthwave producer Sheaf. At the beginning, you may find yourself inside the ground, but just press R on your keyboard to snap back into position. It features three pieces of relaxing electronic music, each of which is a different journey while your car does all the driving. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Out of all the non-interactive music experiences I've tried, this is absolutely my favorite one. It's incredibly well made, and I highly recommend it. Playing through all three tracks took me about nine minutes. Tower VR is a free tower defense game. You certainly know the drill when it comes to tower defense games. But this one did have a unique feature of heroes and soldier units you can deploy on the marching path, which I don't think I've ever seen before. It's okay, but not groundbreaking. Vertigo 2 is the sequel to Vertigo. Crazy, right? It's coming out next year, but there's a brand new demo that you can download and play right now. It's an extremely good demo, with plenty to do and see. It does a great job of bringing you up to speed on the story with the help of some characters that guide you. We'll get you armed up and trained. It's not a friendly world down there in the reactor, and I'm sorry to say that your troubles are far from over. But before long, you'll be neck deep in the action, killing aliens and robots. It's visually beautiful and features great interactions. There's even some minigame easter eggs. For movement, you can teleport or slide around. 
I beat the demo in about 30 minutes, and it's a must play. Game of Kings is an asymmetrical multiplayer chess game, with the VR player existing on the board in a slightly smaller size than the chess pieces, and a PC player using a mouse. The PC player simply points and clicks. The VR player can freely teleport around the board, and when it's their turn, they use the grip buttons to grab a chess piece, then teleport to where it should move and let go of the chess piece. Simple as that. This game features a fast day and night cycle, so the lighting keeps changing, which makes things a little more visually interesting. It could use some more visual polish, I suppose, but it plays great, and being the VR player as a miniature person on the chessboard is pretty fun. If you enjoy chess, then this is a fun new way to play. In Elemental Elixirs, you run a potion alchemy shop inside a fantasy world. Patrons come up to your store, saying either exactly what they need or saying a problem they want to solve. Things like stating they feel weak, or need help in a dark dungeon. Flip through your recipe book to find out how to make their potion, after which you may need to consult the fantasy table of elements, because oftentimes you need to convert ingredients into other elements before you can actually brew the potion. This game is sit down only, and I recommend a swivel chair because you'll need to spin around a lot. I found this fun to play, visually pleasing, with good controls and mixing mechanics. Unfortunately, right now the game is totally silent. If there was sound and music in the game, then it would be a really solid title. Hopefully, audio will be added soon. Smithsonian American Art Museum Beyond the Walls is an unfortunately limited but very well made tour of the Smithsonian. Freely teleport around to see various exhibits including paintings and statues. If you teleport to a marked location in front of an exhibit, you can then push the audio guide button which will give narration and backstory to what you're seeing. John Lafarge is most known for his murals and stained glass projects, particularly for his first mural in Trinity Church in Boston. It's a great VR museum, but it's only two rooms of exhibits. I think it's worth a download, but man do I wish there was more. Maybe one day we'll get to see the entire Smithsonian in VR. I couldn't get this game to work with my index controllers, but it worked fine on my Vive. Did you know that some of America's greatest sculptures are hidden in cemeteries? In 1885, Marion Hooper Clover Adams, an amateur photographer and the wife of the writer Henry Adams. Attack on Titan VR is a fan-made tribute to the Attack on Titan game series. It's an action game, and for a free game it's quite epic in its scale and ambition. Your job is to take down giants roaming around the village. Pressing trigger will shoot your grappling hooks, which will send you flying in that direction. Continuing to hold trigger will let you stay on walls like Spider-Man. On the Titans, you can see weak spots that you want to slice with your swords. Normal game mode will sprinkle regular Titans throughout the map, but you can also choose between three boss fights. The three bosses have an insane amount of health, so they'll prove quite challenging. For locomotion, you can choose teleporting or sliding that's oriented by hand or headset. And thankfully, there is a reduced motion sickness option, since this game can move pretty fast. I couldn't get this game to recognize the trigger button on my index controllers, but it worked fine on my Vive. For epic fast-paced action, this will certainly fit the bill. Air Ranger is a bow and arrow multiplayer game. These types of VR games are a dime a dozen, but this one is one of the best I've played. Every time I've played, there have been other people online to play with, and it's very well made with smooth gameplay, 
good combat mechanics, and a large variety of weaponry and equipment to find and use. You can move via sliding, teleporting, or long distance teleporting with your bow. And what makes the demo especially good is that there's no limitations on the actual gameplay itself. The demo gives you the full experience of the game, but you're only limited to three games per day. And some of these matches can last quite a while, so there is significant free gameplay available in the demo version. I found this pretty fun, and the free demo is totally worth a download. In Gobblegeddon, goblins are storming your castle, and your weapon of choice, of course, is a baseball bat. So you need to keep swatting at the goblins to prevent them from storming your castle in the center path. But you also need to destroy their long-range catapults by sending goblins into those as well. Additionally, on your left and right are more paths for the goblins to use to scale your castle walls so you need to try and deflect the explosion goblins to stop those. <laughs> to be honest, at first I didn't think this game would be much fun, but I found it surprisingly good. Of course it's not a deep game, but it's quite well polished with a great cartoony feel. And this could be a good fit for a free casual party game. Shipping Sheep is a physics-based blend of obstacle course and miniature golf. Spread across nine levels are tumbling, falling sheep that need to go into their pen. So it's up to you to move platforms and other special objects to ensure that the falling sheep do go home. It's not a super long game, but I found it rather enjoyable with a great soothing soundtrack. You can play any level any time, but completing all the levels could take you up to an hour. Also know you'll need a sizable room scale to reach all the objects in all the levels. Shipping Sheep is an adorable, if relatively short, puzzle game. And wrapping up with yet another puzzle game. Labradori is a puzzle challenge where you get to release some delicious meatballs from a dispenser in the ceiling, but the challenge is to use available objects in the room to get the meatballs to the trapped Labrador to enjoy. There are seven puzzle levels in total, and at first all of the objects float in the air, so it's pretty simple. But later levels will introduce objects with gravity and physics, so balancing will be essential. And the final level has the greatest challenge of all because there's only a single meatball to deliver and you have to find a way to get it over the top of the wall. So there's not that many levels, but beating all of them will take quite a bit of time. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya.